Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be showing that this complicated compound proposition is a tautology. So your first activity is going to be to take this compound proposition and some defined propositions for P, Q, and R, some statements that they represent, and write out this compound proposition in English. Um, for example, if P is it is raining and Q is you need an umbrella, you would say if it is raining then you need an umbrella. But we want to do that for all of this. So we're gonna so I'll give you statements for P, Q, and R. You'll take all of that information and apply it to this compound proposition to write out an English statement that represents this whole compound proposition. And the idea there is to hopefully get you to wrap your head around the significance here. If I see that big long statement and know automatically that's true, that's pretty powerful. And so what we're going to do here, instead of using a truth table, we're going to be going through and applying logical equivalences to just break down and piece together this compound proposition. And this is a complicated process at first, and it's tricky, and if you've been in trig before, you kind of know this process from proving uh, trig identities. It's a really similar process, but I think it helps build your proof skills and uh, problem solving skills here, so I think it's an important practice. And just as explained in the first video from the week, Truth tables can get really complicated sometimes. Maybe it wouldn't be so bad in this, but I feel like there's a lot of room for error with the truth table there. And just like in that example that was given at the beginning, you could have a really long truth table that took a really long time to evaluate. But if we're able just to use logical equivalences, in, like we're gonna do in this example, it might make our work a little bit more efficient. And so, what we're going to do, hopefully, we're going to use those logical equivalences to show that this is always true. Um, just as a note, make sure that you've watched or at least understand these key logical equivalences that are linked here. So you should have watched the introductory video kind of to motivate these logical equivalences, and then you should have watched these videos from YouTube that go through all of these key logical equivalences that we're going to be used using and also the the introduction to this process is given within these videos too so it's really nice to to get you started so make sure you've watched that and and so now we're just going to go ahead and try to get this started we'll need a few things like i said we're going to be using those key logical equivalences and i built them into this document but they're also in the powerpoint that's linked the the pdf that's linked and we're also going to need to make sure that we understand order of precedence of logical operators. So let's just take a moment and soak in this compound proposition. We've got one, two, three atomic propositions. We've got P, Q, and R. We've got an implication. We've got and, implication, implication, implication. So we have one, two, three, four, five connectives. So we have quite a few things going on here. Now, we need to fully understand the order of operations here to make sure we understand how to manipulate this statement. So, what I notice is that I've got three things grouped by parentheses. So, for sure, I want to think about these three things as kind of separate little identities here, or separate little entities here. And then they're grouped by this and and implication. So kind of zoom out, ignore what's inside those parentheses, and just focus on the and and the, the implication. If we look at our order of precedence, we notice that and must come before the implication. So this problem actually gets a little bit less complicated knowing that we can group these operations here. So we can group this and and put parentheses around it so we know we have to evaluate that first. And what that helps us with, why I'm thinking about that, is because I know that this, all of this is my hypothesis, and this is my conclusion. So generally when you start out with a compound proposition that has implications in it, the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is change it, change that implication, and apply this logical equivalence here. So you're going to want to take the implication into a form with just, not, and or. So not the hypothesis or the conclusion. 
And the goal there is just to get all ands and ors. Okay, so we want to eventually we want to get everything so it's just ands and ors. Because remember, at the end we want to see a true value of true. And also the reason we want all tr uh, all ands and ors and and negations is take a look at your key logical influences and how you could possibly get to true. And if you notice, there's really only a couple of ways you can get to true. You could, if you take any proposition and or some true proposition, you're going to get true. So we could have a big, long compound proposition with a bunch of little propositions all grouped by or. If we have one that's true in there, we're going to have a true proposition. Okay? So keep that in mind. Another thing to keep in mind when we're trying to show some things as a, as a tautology is that anytime we see a statement or its negation, we get a true truth value. And I think if you just take a moment and think about this negation law, it makes sense. You can prove it with a truth table, um, but notice they're always going to have opposite truth values. If P is true, not P is false. If P is false, not P is true. So no matter what situation you're in with P, you're always going to have a true proposition because they have opposite truth values. So you know that one of them is always going to be true. And if one of them is true with an or, you know that the overall proposition is true. So these are the things we're going to kind of keep our eyes peeled for. But it's going to take a while. Notice how these things only have ors and nots. Okay? And this uh, false one might help us too. We might kind of get rid of stuff because notice what happens. You've got kind of a complicated looking thing here, but you just replace a truth value, okay? which can kind of condense down. Because that's what we're trying to do. We're taking this long thing and condensing it down just to a true T. So I've linked the complete solution to this on D2L in the practice homework for the solution, and I'll link that here uh, next to this video um, so that you can find it easily. But the way that I did it, and I've done it in the past, is just by working through step by step. I didn't provide justification at every step, and I often would move more than one step at a time. And I think that that's okay, but for your purposes of learning and also um, teaching purposes, I think it's better to really break it down and move slow. So that's what I'm going to do here.